let's now discuss the um, how to get the displacement from a velocity versus time ref and how to get the velocity from the acceleration versus time ref. okay <coughs> so if you're given a velocity versus time graph okay then you can find the displacement let's say that the graph looks like uh, this okay so the displacement of uh, this graph uh, the displacement can be obtained from this graph for any time interval. Let's say you're asked the displacement from some time t equals 0 to some time, let's say, t1 over here. Then the displacement is the area under the graph. Okay? <coughs> so delta x, this will be delta x. Okay? So delta x is the area under the velocity versus time graph okay and um, similarly for acceleration let's first look at velocity let's look at simple examples like simple scenarios where you have um, a velocity versus time graph the simplest is like a horizontal line right so let's say that you have a horizontal line and let's say that the velocity of the particle or the object is constant from t equals 0 to t equals uh, let's say 2 seconds and let's say this is 4 meters per second okay now if if you're asked to find the velocity the, the displacement of this object from 0 to 2 seconds you'll you'll find the area so this is just the area of the rectangle in this case so this is 4 meters per second times 2 seconds so that's just 8 meters okay so in general, for a fixed value of velocity, so this is like a fixed value of velocity delta x is just v naught t. Remember this equation? This is the equation of motion delta x equals v naught t. Okay. And if you have a scenario where the velocity is uh, a uh, let's say a linear function, right? So let's say that this is your velocity now. Okay, so let's say that your now your velocity is changing at every point, right? So let's say that your velocity, let's say it's 12 meters per second over here at let's say three seconds. Now, if you're asked the displacement from zero to three uh, from zero to three seconds, then that would be area of this triangle. So delta x will be half of 12 meters per second, okay, times three seconds, okay. So the area of this triangle, this, that's the uh, displacement in this case. Okay. So then that's uh, just uh, 18 meters. Okay. Now it of course depends on the time. Um, let's say that the graph looks uh, different. Let's say that the graph looks like um, well, let's say the graph looks like this. Then, of course, if you're asked the time, uh, you're asked the displacement. Now, the general, let's look at the general equation. The general equation of a straight line on this graph is just V equals AT. Okay? So, uh, this is the, this is like for uh, any time T, it's T. Uh, and this is um, AT, right? So the the height of this triangle is in for a general like for in general is at and th uh, the the base is t. So in general the displacement is half of at times t. So that's just half at squared. Okay, this is just the displacement of a particle that starts with zero initial velocity, right? So if there is no uh, if there is some initial velocity, then you will get um, uh, so for for this scenario, the velocity versus time graph is. <coughs> going to look like uh, so, so for this for this uh, uh, scenario the displacement will is going to look like uh, delta x equals v naught t so you have some like this region as a rectangle so the area of this is v naught t plus half a t squared so that's just the equation for an object with a constant acceleration starts with initial velocity v naught okay 
So if you have this scenario, um, you have to add the area of the rectangle and then the triangle as well. Okay, that's uh, that's the velocity versus that's how you get the displacement from the velocity versus time. And again, remember this example, the two examples we did away. Okay. And if you have the acceleration versus time ref, okay, so, and then you want the velocity from this graph, okay, so the idea is, is the same. The idea is the same. You have to uh, get the area under the curve, okay, so delta x, sorry, delta v, so if you have a graph like this, then delta v is the uh, is, is the area under this graph, right? So the area under this graph will be delta v, okay? And uh, so let's write that delta v is equal to area under the acceleration versus time graph, okay? So let's look at an example. Of, uh, so let's say that um, you have an acceleration versus time ref. This is an example how to get the velocity from the acceleration versus time ref. So, um, so let's say that the object is moving such that the acceleration is given like this. It's, it's a function like this. The, the at time t equals four seconds. Let's say this is four seconds. Uh, so four seconds has an acceleration of four meters per second squared. Okay. Now, if you're asked to find the velocity, let's say at t equals eight seconds, let's say this this is eight seconds, then you have to find the area, the change in velocity. So in these scenarios, when you're asked the velocity at a particular time, let's say so the question asks you the velocity at b equals eight seconds. Then in in this type of scenario, the question will give you the initial velocity. Of the, of the particle at t equals zero. So at t equals zero, the object is moving with velocity 10 meters per second. This is given in the question, okay? Uh, because you can't read velocity from this graph, okay? So the question will give you uh, the velocity at t equals zero. So, so what is the velocity at eight seconds? We have to find the area under this graph, okay? For the velocity. So it's going to be four multiplied by four, so Delta V, remember, so, so let's write delta V equals 4 meters per second. So area of the tri uh, of the uh, of the square in this case, um, and the area of the triangle. So that's like 4 times 4, half of 4 times 4. So 4 meters per second squared times 4 seconds. So this is 4 multiplied by 4. This is 4 multiplied by 4 and half because it's the area of the uh, triangle. So you get 16 meters per second plus uh, 8 meters per second. So that gives you 24 meters per second. But remember, this is the delta V. This is V minus V naught. So this is like V at 8 seconds minus V at 0 seconds equals 24 meters per second. Okay? So if you want the velocity at um, 8 seconds, you have to add this velocity. The initial velocity is 10 meters per second. So if you take velocity uh, at 0 seconds over here, so you get v at 8 seconds to be uh, 34 meters per second. So that's your velocity at 8 seconds. Okay. And one important thing about uh, these graphs is that when you have, uh, when you have these graphs, you have to uh, like let's 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 take this graph again, right? But let's say you have a, a scenario where you need um, this is again four seconds, and uh, this is let's say again eight at eight seconds. But now the graph goes down like that. Let's see, okay? So at let's say nine seconds, the graph is over here, and let's say that this is. Uh, uh, negative one meters per second squared. Okay, so this is something that students always ask, and uh, you should uh, you should uh, make sure that you understand this. So this is again acceleration versus time. The ex the area of this graph is going to be of this part of the graph is going to be negative because 
the acceleration is negative, right? So, so then you have to subtract the whole thing out. Uh, so then V at eight seconds. So delta V. So this this part stays the same, but now you have to like uh, uh, for for now now you have the the that that area is the same. So that's still 24 meters per second. Okay. And this guy has now uh, an area of like, this is negative one and this is one, so this like um, negative uh, half of one meters per second. Um, sorry, okay, so then let's put a negative here and then uh, one second. So that's like <clears throat> 24 meters per second um, minus 0 0.5 meters per second. So, so the velocity, will be 23.5 meters per second, okay, it's 23.5. So again, at velocity at nine seconds will again be uh, V naught plus 23.5 meters per second. So V naught again, if uh, it's a, a resuming is 10 meters per second, so that's just uh, 33.5 meters per second. So, so that's when you have a negative, uh, when the graph goes negative, you subtract the area to get the velocity. So this was uh, just uh, yeah the discussion on uh, how to get the velo how to get displacement from the velocity versus time graph, and how to get uh, the velocity from the acceleration versus time graphs. Uh, just one last comment. Uh, in general, so since some students uh, do not. Uh, they don't have a calculus background, so I wanted to say this at the end. In general, you will like acceleration is dv by dt, right? So if you if you uh, don't study calculus, if you're just studying algebra-based physics, the physics you can stop uh, now. Uh, it's going to get scary. <laughs> so you you know that acceleration dv by dt, right? So dv is a dt. So in general. If you integrate this, delta v is just uh, uh, a dt. So it's this is you know that from calculus that this is uh, the area under the a versus t graph. From calculus, you know that if you have f of x versus x graph, any graph you have, any function you have, the integral, the interpretation of the integral is that, that it's the area under the graph. Okay. From some time interval, let's say a to b, if you. Will. So that's the integral. So in this case, delta v is if you have a function like a crazy function uh, of acceleration versus time graph, then uh, you let's say a graph like this, which you usually don't see, but in any case, the area under this graph will be the change in velocity, which is, will be the integral from some time t t1 to t2, let's say a to t, and and similarly, that's true for the velocity versus time graph. So if the velocity, if you have the velocity versus time graph, and you want the displacement, uh, and then you have, let's say, a function like this, or any general function, you have to, uh, since velocity is dx by dt, if you want the displacement, you can integrate this from some initial position to some initial position to final position, and then from some time t initial to t final, uh, then this again is the area under the graph. So this is when you have a function that is uh, like uh, you know any general function of time. Then you have to resort to integration uh, in order to get the area under the graph. But at this at the undergraduate level, you mostly see uh, linear functions. Mostly, you can see some other functions, but mostly they're linear functions. So you should be familiar with this uh, also. Okay. So that was it for position uh, from uh, how to get displacement and change in velocity from velocity versus time graph and acceleration versus time graph. If you have any questions, post them in the comments. Thank you for watching. Bye.